Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this update video, we check the progress of a Polistes dominula nest, or European paper wasp, that was relocated from the wild into captivity at the end of May 2022. This nest was first filmed for YouTube in early June 2022, so you can check out our other videos to see that initial footage. This update video was filmed on June 20th, 2022, to show you the birth of the very first adult female worker wasp to emerge from this nest. Since that time, there's been several others born, and we'll show you an update video on that soon. Now I realize the term born can be taken with a grain of salt. Technically, they're hatched from an egg, they grow into larva, they then pupate into the adult form of the wasp. But to keep things simple, we call that whole process being born. This is a unique process that you do not see very often, and it's very fun to be able to see it up close. So take a look, enjoy, hope you have a good time watching this and you might learn something as well. Here we see the queen or the foundress of this nest standing by as the cell in the center starts to move around a little bit. You're going to notice that the silk cap on this cell is starting to be removed. What happens here is the adult pupating wasp, who's about to come out of that cell, starts chewing away the silk cap until it has enough freedom of movement to actually come out of the cell. So she's just finishing that process where she has chewed all the way around the edges of that cell. I missed that on video. It happened prior to me being aware of the fact that the first wasp was coming out. So I quickly grabbed a camera and film the rest. You can see the other two wasps on either side of her in the pupation cells are moving around a little bit. They are also just about getting ready to come out, but for now the first one to be born here is going to be our center cell. You can start to see her antenna and her legs come out as she starts working her way out of the cell. And there she is. Welcome to the world, young lady. The foundress kind of just looks at this and takes it in stride. She doesn't make a big production out of it. The adult worker wasps are born fully functional. So it's not like they need a lot of help from the mom. They know how to groom, as you see her doing here. She's grooming herself. And once she feels like she's groomed herself enough, uh, she'll remove herself entirely from the cell, which you'll see in a minute here. It takes her a few minutes to get oriented and to clean herself up enough to continue. Essentially, she works a lot on her antenna. They are very sensitive organs, and they feed her a lot of information about the world she just came into. So she works on those first and cleans them up. Once that happens, she works on her legs and continues, and out she comes. So watch for a few minutes, and when she's done with this grooming process, you're going to see her pull herself right out of the cell. So we'll transition now to the actual audio recorded during this process. You can't hear the wasps doing anything because we filmed from outside the habitat, looking into the habitat through the glass. So the sound you hear will be just a natural atmospheric sound in the room and the sound of my voice speaking to young Kai. Uh, I always get a kick out of kids and their response to nature and he certainly enjoyed seeing this. So you'll hear his voice as well. Hey, buddy, you want to see a wasp being born live? Sure. A wasp is being born. Oh, it is. Hi. Oh, hello there. <laughs> it's the first one born in captivity. Wow. This one's a Polistia dominula. Eh, a little help here. Come on. Yeah, you got it, buddy. Come on out. Here she comes. That's so cool. Mm, neat. Cool there. Just crawling out of the cell. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick here for a little. I thought the one next door was gonna do it. That one was making more moves today. Grooming? There's always an importance of looking good. This is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that this one decided to groom a lot before it came through. Yeah. Out. There she is. Hey. Hello. Okay. 
Yeah, she goes. That's so cool. Look at it. Pops right out. Good job, Wasper. It's so interesting how they just grow into that thing. Yeah, they under... just fully, fully formed adult wasp. Her wings are still a little wet. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Glad you were there to see that, buddy. That's pretty neat. Not many people in the world have seen that. <laughs> Except on YouTube. She's the one who's grooming her butt. Yeah. <laughs> That's her. She just came out. A brand new wasp in the world. I know what she's doing. So it takes her a long time to kind of stretch and learn how to move her body and clean up. That's so neat. And then Mama Wasp will go right in there and clean up that cell. And then she'll lay another egg right in there real quick. Like I don't see that. So how oh, I see it in there. The mother wasp is like, come on, I need no help. That's right. Come on. So here we transition back to voiceover. And what you see here is the foundress wasp cleaning out the cell that was just vacated by the brand new adult wasp who had pupated and come out. Uh, she'll clean up that cell very, very carefully. And as soon as she feels like it's clean enough, uh, you'll see her immediately lay an egg in it. The instinct of the foundress wasp is to crank out as many eggs and as many worker wasps as possible, as fast as possible, to grow that colony. So no time is wasted between the pupating adult coming out of the cell, the cell getting cleaned up, and a new egg going in. So the process of preparing the cell for the next egg is interesting to see. You see her chewing away on the silk cap, first of all, to remove the rest of the debris from the silk cap that the previous larva and adult wasp that just came out uh, had put over the cell uh, to protect it during pupation. So now that she's got it removed, uh, she'll just discard it and get it out of the way. And then she'll continue cleaning out the cell. They have to be very careful about this because there's parasites or there's disease or there's dirt or debris that could affect the development of the next egg. So they're very careful to make sure anything in there is removed and that it's clean. Uh, this nest in particular, so far as we know, it does not have any parasites um, and does not have any problems. It seems to be doing fine in captivity so far. But part of that process is keeping it very clean. You'll notice that the new wasp that just emerged from that cell uh, is engaged in very careful grooming. Uh, this is all instinctual behavior that they know how to do immediately when they come in. And now you see how the other wasp, the queen, the foundress, puts her leg up on top of the other wasp. This is partially because of where the wasp is located. She just has to get around the cell, so she's got to walk and move around it. But you'll see more of that behavior in the future. This is how the foundress, or queen, explains to the new wasp who was just born, who is a female. The foundress will kind of let that new wasp know from birth. All right, you're going to be the subordinate worker and I'm going to be the boss laying the eggs. And part of the way they do that is by oftentimes putting their leg or their foot over the other one to sort of hold it in place sometimes. And that behavior uh, is considered part of the dominance process to establish which wasp is going to be the ongoing queen laying eggs. And so that walking over on top of another wasp is, uh, is considered dominance behavior. Here as we look into the cells a little bit, you can see some of the other developing eggs in the very small larva that has already hatched and, and begun the larval stage. And above that you can see a very soon to be born adult wasp in the pupation stage. Uh, some of the silk cap is already removed from that. And that could happen by accident uh, and if something fell on the nest, or that could happen if they started to chew away the silk cap or sometimes even another wasp that's not involved with the foundress wasp will come over and attempt to actually eat one of the pupating wasps and they will damage the silk cap in that process and the, the foundress wasp has to fight them off. So this is uh, happening on each side of this cell that she's cleaning. One is still pretty much a larva, that's the one on the left. The other is just about ready to come out as an adult wasp on the right. So they're in two different stages of the pupation process. 
So you can see she's already repaired a lot of the edges around that cell that was just vacated. And she does this by sort of hydrating the fibers of the nest with her fluids and that she'll regurgitate and use to help mold the edges of the cell. And this is done very carefully to make the cell prepared for the next egg. You can see a lot of motion in that cell to the right where the adult pupating wasp is about to come out of that right side one pretty soon. It actually came out this same night, uh, but I missed it because I stayed up as late as I could to catch that one on film, but when that one came out it was uh, very, very early morning in the wee hours and I missed it. So we ended up finding the next one out and about later that morning. So over about the next 90 seconds or so, you're going to see her doing her final preparations on this particular cell. Once she's ready, after about 90 seconds, she will then begin the egg laying process by lowering her abdomen into the cell. And she'll stay there and go through what we might call the labor process. And she'll stay very still for a number of minutes. And then whenever the egg has been delivered and attached to the side of the cell, she'll then come back out. If you look down into the cell she's cleaning, you can see that light comes in through the bottom of the cell. And that is just light. It, it looks like it might be an object, but it's actually just light reflecting up from the bottom of the cell. You'll see her dive in here a couple of times all the way to the bottom of the cell just to get it ready. These are the last final prep moves she'll make before she turns around and drops her abdomen in and begins laying the egg. Notice how the other wasp, the new adult that was just born in that same cell, is still engaged in the process of grooming and getting her bearings. Uh, this process will go on all day until it's uh, feeling ready to be a little more functional. You can also see some of the nectar droplets and water droplets on the cell just above the one she's cleaning, the empty cell. She has those droplets attached to the side of the nest. So just be aware those are not eggs. We're going to show you what the egg looks like here in a minute. She's going to begin laying it now. So at this point, we'll go back to the atmospheric sound. Hey, buddy, she's already laying an egg in there. You want to see? She's already set herself up in there to lay an egg. Check it out. Look on the screen of the camera. See how she mm -hmm. tucked herself right in? She cleaned it right up, and now she's dropping another egg right now. But won't they get angry? No, nope, not at all. This one is the dominant queen, oh. so she's allowed to just drop sense. eggs whenever she needs to. So she stays in there for about five minutes and then pops out. Three. Sometimes not even five minutes. So back on voiceover now, you'll notice that the other wasp is still grooming and just sort of resting. Uh, it takes a lot of energy for that new wasp to chew her way out, to groom completely, to become acclimated to the room and the world, in fact, that she's now in. And in the meantime, the foundress, or the queen, immediately drops that egg. She doesn't waste any time. And when we go to film this, uh, we didn't want to disturb her. We just kind of were very quiet at this point and made no sound. We just wanted to see exactly how long it would take for her to do this. So just for your reference, we saw her in labor like this, very still, for about three and a half minutes. So that's the entire length of time. And then you'll see her just pop right back out, and we take a peek in the cell, and there's a brand new egg there. So you'll see that here in just a moment. We wanted to show you this process in real time, uh, just so you can get an idea of the entire process uninterrupted and unedited. If you look down into the cells in the foreground, the lower part of the frame, you can see a couple of new eggs down in there that have not hatched into the young larva yet. That's what this new egg is going to look like. It'll be attached to the side of the cell. They're never in the very bottom of the cell. They're always on the side of the wall of the cell. And while this process is going on, the other wasp that has just been born in that same cell is still grooming and becoming acclimated. And the next wasp that's going to try to come out is very active. Uh, she's just about ready to pop out of that next cell herself. And like I said earlier, she'll, she'll do that later tonight when uh, we were all asleep and we found her there in the morning. Take a look here at the, the height of these cells. You're going to notice the new egg cells are still very low. They're short because they only have to fit an egg. 
the medium sized ones they've been built up because they had to be tall enough for the developing larva and the tallest ones of course that you see were made that tall throughout the process of the larva growing so that they could accommodate the fully adult pupated wasp so the building of the nest occurs at the same time as the developmental process physically demands a taller wall on the nest. So she's just about finishing up here and in a few seconds you're going to see her pop out and then we'll take a look at that brand new egg. By the way if you look down at the bottom of the nest you can see some of the carcasses of the mealworms we've been feeding them while they're in captivity. These mealworms stand in for the natural caterpillar type prey that they would usually eat. So here she's finished laying the egg and now she'll check it. And she goes down in there to make sure it's properly secured to the side of the cell wall. And she'll spend a few minutes just cleaning up and making sure the egg is good. Here we'll freeze the frame a little bit so you can get a peek at that brand new egg. And you can compare it to the cell next door that has a hatched egg with a brand new larva. It's remarkable how adaptive these creatures actually are. As you may recall, if you watched the other video about this nest when we first relocated it, it was actually found on the underside of a lid of a recycle bin. And the people that owned the property where that bin was located wanted it gone or killed. So we relocated it into captivity for study. And despite the complete change of environment into an entirely foreign, unnatural habitat that we try to make comfortable for them, but it's certainly not the natural world, they still thrived in this environment. They, they were able to reproduce, able to raise larvae, lay eggs, and maintain the nest. The nest is upside down compared to the way it normally hangs from a structure, and they have adapted well to that. So this species in particular... Polistes dominula is still considered an invasive species in North America, but part of the reason they were able to take over so much of this new range is that they are remarkably adaptable. They're very well known for that. They actually came from Asia and Europe. That's why they call them the European paper wasp. And I think northern parts of Africa even, where they're native. But when they got here, they completely took over a lot of the range that used to be for like the northern paper wasp or the metricus wasp. They have completely displaced a lot of them because they're so aggressive in their reproduction and adaptive ability. Polistes dominula are especially good in the urban environment, cities, you name it, they're going to be there, as well as anything in the rural environment. So there you have it, the process of coming out of a pupating cell and the process of putting an egg right back into that cell. Uh, you got to see them both today. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll have plenty more coming up. Content related to what we do here at Green Wasp Removal, which is environmentally responsible control of these critters, wasps of all sorts. So stay tuned and have a good one.